Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you're listening, welcome back. We have got a bloody good one today. A bloody good bloody one, good guys. One. And why are we sat like this? Who knows? We'll find out. But today's episode is all about bands. We know you've been waiting for it. You've all been asking for it. Begging. And we're going to give you a good one today. Yeah. And what gives us the right to talk about it? Don't know. Roll the intro. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and welcome the Unfiltered Bride podcast. Tips from the top table and beyond, so you know it's going to be juicy. This podcast has been sponsored by the wonderful Crafty Lab. Unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know that I got married last year and these guys created one of my favourite elements of the wedding. Oh, I love them. These were your newspapers, weren't they? Yes. So we used them as a little guide to the day for guests. So we included order of the day, crossword, bridal party names, our love story, QR codes for image sharing, Spotify playlist link, and believe it or not, more things. It was so personal and you know that I love a bit of personality in a wedding. They're professionally designed for each couple, so it's not just a template that someone else will have. Each couple gets a truly unique newspaper. They don't print until you're 100% happy to. So even for you type A brides, you'll love them. They have amazing customer service. They really cared and went above and beyond to make sure that we were happy, which we were. A small business with a big heart. You can have them anywhere and everywhere. And you even had them in the taxis on the way to the ceremony and dotted around the venue. But I've also seen them on ceremony chairs, wedding breakfast tables, and in accommodation. And at 89p a copy, why wouldn't you? So head to thecraftylab.co.uk to secure your spot in their order book. But be quick, there are limited slots for each month, and once they're gone, they're gone. So get them booked. You definitely don't want to miss out. If you're wanting to find out more, we've popped their details in the description below. Please welcome, stand up, raise your hands, clap, wave napkins, whatever you need to do, and welcome Dan, the owner of the Function Band. Woo! Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Excited to be here. Are you excited or terrified? Both. Okay. (laughs) For anyone who's lived under a rock and doesn't know the Function Band, give us a little, give us the spiel. Tell us about you. Um, So, as you just said, I'm the the CEO and founder. Uh, I've been in the industry for 21 years. Yes. But you look so young. Yeah. Just baby. It's I the know. Botox. I know. I, yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, but I mean, I've had the band for 15 years. So okay. up 15 years ago. And um, the my business partner and the other director is my father. Oh. Uh, yes. Yeah, currently Ooh. in Mallorca on a um, uh, site visit. So he's very jealous that he's On a here. site visit? Yes. Oh. Do you just add Whatever. that in and say, yeah. we have to do a site visit? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah. And, um, but yeah, and we've built it up together um, over the years. And um, now we have, there's about 40 members in the band. So if anyone does follow us on, on Insta or TikTok, they'll see there's lots of faces, but it's always the same faces. And then we do um, a lot of, of mainly weddings, but also private events, corporate events, birthdays, etc. Go on, name but, drop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well i'm trying to think the ones that i'm allowed to say oh, we do, we, there we, we go do, we do a lot of footballers yeah um we do a lot of um uh like influencers and uh like towie people and love island people again if you follow us and you've probably seen we do like jess wright's wedding that yeah we, we won her tv show for and we've done um a few things for for billy fairs and um and we're doing stuff for sam as well so yeah lots of lots of really cool things and and other singers and performers and yeah nice what we're just gonna bombard you with questions personally okay. first and then we'll go to what the couples want to know which yeah. is all the juicy wedding okay. stuff but <laughs> just like how have you got so big <laughs> how has the band wow. got so big <laughs> how, have you, how have you how have you blown up like like you so, have <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Freak. So we were, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna ignore. That. <laughs> yeah. um, so we, um, obviously, it's been a long time. So we've been we've been busy for a long time. Um, I'd say like ten years, and um, but then about maybe five or six years ago, I got onto Instagram, and I didn't really. I guess I was one of those people that didn't really see the value in it yeah um but then also it was sort of at, at the beginning of it but you know it's like a whole nother job just trying to do that we actually we did a, a an event in ireland for a, a big influencer over there and um that i remember we finished and the, i woke up the next morning and we had 
uh, two and a half thousand Irish Instagram followers wow. and uh, two two hundred and fifty Irish wedding inquiries, and that was the first time I'd ever really seen like okay, well this is like, and we probably only had like a couple of thousand followers at the time anyway. Um, so then it sort of started to build from there, and then actually COVID, um, obviously when that came was when I started doing TikTok, which I hadn't done. And I think had that not have happened, I wouldn't have had the time to do TikTok. Actually, I know that you guys have talked about it in another podcast, but it gave you that time to do marketing and do other things. And um, so, yeah, I definitely wouldn't have been able to do that. And I was I was going like, I was sitting there for like four or five hours a day, going through old footage and putting videos up. And um, and then, yeah, that's just how, how it built up really on on social media are we going to ignore the fact that you're totally different from any other band though <laughs> try, like massively skipped over yeah that. sorry okay yeah so um you can't just put videos on and hope that no that's, that's, very, true. that's very true <laughs> we do try no, and also it's interesting with that because i think we like obviously i know like what we do and it's great and you know when you're in it and you you love it and you uh, you know, it's we know it's a good product, but then when we start to get in the reaction we are getting on social, especially on TikTok, and especially in lockdown, um, and seeing like um, you know people's reactions to to what we're doing and everyone being together. So yeah, one of the main things is that we're very interactive. We're all wireless, so we're all out in the crowd, and we just want to create like a crazy atmosphere, really, and create those memories um, and bring everyone together. And I think. No, there isn't another bit of a wedding that does that yeah. like music does yeah. it is the bit it is the bit that ties everybody together and, and where those special memories are coming from and your photos and your videos so yeah, we have a few like usps um again if you know us you'll know that we all stand on podiums when guests come in it's a real wow factor and it's really cool um which i've got a good story about that actually that happened um the other day go on um, <laughs> go for it now i'll go for it now yeah we love the story <laughs> okay so this, we want this, boss. this literally just happened on saturday we okay. did a wedding in in scotland i think it's fine to tell the story and uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah so as guests come in um we're all up on podiums it's really cool it's like it's you know they're seeing the room for the first time and the flowers and everything and then it's just that added that added wow like then seeing us all up and spread around um, the room up on these podiums and this guy came in it was a, a wedding in scotland and um he like came straight over and i'm in the middle of singing i maybe should have said that as well i'm one of the singers as yeah, well. yeah although yeah, there's yeah, loads true. of us there's i'm not more important than anyone else sure i'm sure, one of the singers sure. and, no, that's true. we'll come back to that but that's true and um <laughs> everyone's gonna be like how uh, can i get down at my no, wedding how no, do i put no, down no, 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 no. um and um so this guy he comes over he walks straight over and he goes um i don't know how are you gonna do a scottish accent accent? yeah i'm gonna attempt it i'm gonna attempt it sorry everyone um and he goes um hey you want to get on my shoulders so i was (laughs) like really good it was quite good wasn't it so i i was like uh nah all right (laughs) i'm in the middle of performing all the guests are coming in and he's like hey yeah go on get on my shoulders so i'm like oh okay (laughs) so i thought it'd be quite funny obviously um like it will look quite good and whatever. So I'll, I'll go with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not even for me, but just for the guests. So um, so I get on his shoulders and then he's walking <laughs> me around and I'm like singing. And he gets to the like to the middle of the room like, on the dance floor. And he starts to like lower himself down. So I assumed he was letting me off. But then he now it starts going up and down. <laughs> and, and he's he's in a um he's obviously in a kilt yeah. and he's in it like the proper way with obviously. nothing underneath. And then he starts going on like one leg, um, like on each leg, balancing with me on his shoulders. <laughs> But obviously he's got no underwear on and he's lifting his leg up high. Like it is, it is was, there a video of this? There, there must be. There must be. And I don't want to see it because it must be horrendous. But actually then later in the night, I'm going to give him a little shout out. His name's Dylan and he's an absolute legend. Um, crazy, but a legend. Yeah. And later in the night he was doing, um, he was like in the middle of the dance floor and he was doing the worm. But obviously he's naked. And and he's like got like, uh, I don't know if I can say this, but like a big hairy bum. And, um, and <laughs> Big hair everything's bell, out i and thought he was gonna yeah. say something else so like, <laughs> that was pretty pg no, 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 just that, yeah. um yeah and it's, yeah, but doesn't that it's mean the crazy. other things on the dance floor yes exactly <laughs> no it did yeah no that's what was crazy yeah, no. yeah. wow yes yeah, so that was interesting you yeah. really will take one for the team though and get I on will, the scottish shoulders yeah and there was there was one more dylan story that night which is then all the guests because we're interacting we walk around we like to get into the crowd and and like be with everyone and celebrate together and all the boys had their arms around each other and were singing. 
so I I went over and I put my arm around. It happened to also be be Dylan. Um, of course, of course it was the and man with no pants on. Yeah. And he said, um, "Are you want to play my uh, leg as a guitar?" So I was like, <laughs> Nah, nah, nah. Really. <laughs> he's like yeah go on it'll be funny so i'm like oh, okay wait for the guitar solo because i knew it was coming up so the guitar solo comes he lifts his leg up so i'm like playing his leg then one of the other singers comes over and he's like um you know when these like rock stars are like like licking the guitar while they play so like my singer who i won't say his name he's like <laughs> licking the top or pretending to top this guy's leg it was literally yeah it was mental but uh yeah Shout so what we've legend. learned is that if you ask you to do something twice, you'll do it. Basically, yeah, that's the story each time, isn't it? Yeah, twice I think about it. Yeah, no, honestly, it's fine. Oh, All yeah. right, then, go ahead. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So yeah, very much crowd pleasers then. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, sorry, I, I digress there. So yeah, podiums is like a little thing, and then dinner is like really what we're known for. So um, to the point where I think maybe people don't realize how much that we're there all night and we're doing all the party stuff. But like the dinner is the bit you see a lot on our on our socials because it's so sort of special. So and explain this to us then, because we've talked about this on a previous podcast yeah. about singing between. So Beth comes from an events background, but she remembers seeing you. You were one of the first yeah, bands they were she'd the ever seen. First band I ever saw 10 years ago at Northbrook Park. Still shout it out and to this day. Yeah, no one has com- compared close. Oh, so that's it. Beth's um, opinion. Yeah, and I'm a hard, I have a really high standard of things. Yeah. But um, it was the dinner set for me that I walked out and everyone was stood on chairs, napkin in hand. And that is what you're known for mm-hmm. from my perspective of getting everyone up during dinner sets. Yeah, exactly. Funny enough, sorry, when you say napkin in hand, I, um, <laughs> like we're not encouraging you to get your napkin in hand. And someone recently was like, yeah, I don't want to bit you because everyone puts their napkins in their hands. I'm not telling you to put your napkins in their hands. <laughs> everyone don't get your napkins in, your in the air. Yeah, do whatever you want with the napkins. Like, I'm not interested. Please don't because people hire napkins from us and that's yeah, how they go <laughs> Well, I'm not telling you. I blame you. you. No, yeah. it's not us. But yeah, so it's, it's very cool. And, and again, like when you're seeing a 15 second clip on social media, it's hard to like know exactly what is actually happening. But so um, basically it's just, it's during main course. So not during starter and dessert, during starter and dessert, you'll have background music playing, our DJ is playing background so that everyone can chat. During main course, um, it starts very cool and acoustic. We actually, we're sitting on our podiums and then- I've we'll seen s- that on Instagram as yeah, well. See, so <laughs> yeah. my background is catering. Yeah. So when somebody says, oh, we're going to we're gonna have music during the main call, I'm like, you can fuck off. Because <laughs> we've got Beef Wellington yeah. coming out. Like, so yeah. just maybe break that. So you already yeah. start down low. Okay, so that, yeah, that's, no, that's a really good point. And I, again, I've had people sort of ask it. And I, I guess I probably have people not get in contact because they are maybe not aware. And yeah. you see these, these little clips of everyone going crazy and you think, Standing on tables. Do they actually stand on tables? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, (laughs) no, but that's actually not what happens. So on the whole, (laughs) 95% of the time, it's very background and we are, it's very strategic. So we're not wanting to get everyone involved until we can see everyone is pretty much finished. Obviously it can take a long time to serve 200 people plus. Um, So, but we're trying to time it that, right, they're starting to finish. Now we can start to get up. And so really, by the time they're actually on their chair, everyone's finished. And actually it helps you guys because now you can serve in peace. And timing wise, it doesn't change anything of the day. We're not taking up extra time. It's just from when mains is served, eaten to when it's cleared. Like that's it, it's just within that period. So you don't set a certain amount of time for no, that bit? No, exactly. Like obviously I wanna make sure like if there's a speech after mains then we're yeah. done or if the dessert's coming out, you know, then we're obviously not still on while they're serving dessert because then we are in the way. But you know, when when the caterer is serving, we're not in the way at all. We want you to serve in peace for yeah. everyone to get, to get fed. Um, but yeah, I, I think it is just maybe perception. And there there are the odd, the reason I said 95% uh, happen like that, because there's the odd one where it's, it's just that amazing crowd where you do a, a background song and immediately they're up. It's one party. Yeah. Now I don't want to discourage that because it's, it's special and like it's it's natural. They're, they're not having to be pushed. It's not forced fun. Um, we, we want <laughs> No one wants fun. forced fun. Forced fun. <laughs> no one wants that. But what people aren't seeing on social media is us going, all right, at the end of that song going, eat sit down food. and eat and then we'll do this in a minute. Yeah, we want you to eat. You've paid obviously a lot of money to yeah. eat. 
Yeah, so I always have a little line I like to say if anyone like calls the office and they happen to speak to me, which is that no one's ever left the wedding and said, oh, I ate the best chicken breast or I saw the best flower. But obviously, <laughs> if your nan is standing on a table singing Gangster's Paradise in the middle of dinner, then you're going to remember that forever. So. Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty that. special. Yeah, that's what we want to that's what we want to give you. But, you know, as well, like that's for me, that's where those memories are coming from those the photos and the videos they're, they're coming from that and that's obviously the other stuff is really important you it's don't not, need to say that to <laughs> no genuinely <laughs> yeah you is, do <laughs> it is. And it, you know and it's it's not to say that it's not but it's that like in your video in your you know when you're showing your grandkids the videos from it you'll be showing them those moments of being together mm. with family and it being just that crazy amazing atmosphere so yeah that's really what we want to try and give and like honestly we take it it's going to sound cheesy um Go on, but I'm not, che- love a bit not cheesy at all but like we, this is your one special day hopefully and you know and we take it really hopefully seriously. it was a key word in hopefully, that yeah we've done a few we've done the wedding and then the no, next you no you haven't no you haven't i don't yeah. believe that of course <laughs> but, um, do you know what i'm gonna reboot the same band i had at my yeah. first wedding because they were that good they were that good yeah um no but it's um you know it, it means a lot to us and i think like that's why everyone always says oh you look so, you all look so happy on stage you look like you're having fun well we are having fun we're living our best lives I, we've said guys. before like you can't work in the wedding industry unless you fucking love weddings because yeah. they're long they're they tiring are. they're stressful if you don't l- get that buzz from the wedding yeah you, there's no point doing yeah, it no nah, million percent what's the best wedding you've ever done uh <laughs> I, I, I don't actually think I've got a short answer to it. Like what, one thing I will say, and again, I think some people, you know, um, social media is always obviously a little bit like uh, like Insta versus reality, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, not, not to say any of our videos aren't, re- that's what was happening and it was real. But to the point where I think some people think like, oh, well, my wedding isn't going to be like in Lake Coma and it's not going to look like that and whatever. Honestly, like some of the best we've ever done have been in like someone's lounge. Or like, yeah. it, 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 again, I don't think that's important. I think the people are important. It doesn't matter where it's at the Savoy or wherever it might be, or that you spend a million pounds on flowers or whatever. Um, but if you've got the right people and you've got the right music and, you know, you tie it together, then that is the bit of the party that really, I think, is, is important. So what's the ingredients of a perfect wedding? So um, that's a good question. And I, know, I think and I think it's something <laughs> like everyone, each supplier obviously has their own agenda and their own things that are important to them. For me, and this isn't to say that it doesn't not work this way around because, you know, people do what they want. They have the venue that they want. For me, if I could choose, then the bar's got to be in the same room as the dance floor. It has okay, to yeah. Interesting. It, it's not to say that we've done ones where it's not and it hasn't worked because it, it does work and it's fine. But obviously, you don't want to give people a reason to go outside. Because once you're out at the bar, which is in another, let's say it's in another room, and you get chatting to someone, you just forget where you are, and then an hour's gone, and now they're like, oh, the wedding's nearly over. Yeah. You know, and then we got one more song. Like, I've been here three hours. Just <laughs> one more song. I love a one more song. <laughs> um, I'm that so person. I think, yeah. yeah, that, like, I think if possible, then it's, uh, again, as I said, it's not like imperative, but I think if possible. Dance floor size is a huge thing as well. Like I see people putting in these massive floors. No one wants to dance on an empty dance yeah, floor. Yeah, see, I've seen, I've seen too big a dance floor. Yeah. And it's like, then yeah. you're just kind of... I actually almost don't think there's anything... Uh, um, there's no such thing as too small a dance floor. Yeah. Like, let's pack the floor. Yeah. Like, let's not have it so big. I've seen one once they had 400 people, but the floor, you could have had 1,000. And no one wants to be on there. You yeah. feel like you're floating around. So I think that, if possible... Um, as well like room shape and size is really sort of and layout is is also important um like just just to keep the atmosphere in and keep everyone together yeah i guess it's good to know as well we did an episode about venues and stuff knowing if like if music and your sort of style is the sort of thing that people want actually trying to find a venue that accommodates that yeah look i think we can be anywhere and we can you be been, anywhere yeah, anywhere because other any, than any, other, anywhere yeah though. because other than like in our dj live setup like other than our dj everyone else is wireless okay so like we don't take up a lot of space like we take up the same amount of space as the waiter does when he's serving you know we're not taking up a lot of space um so minus the big podium <laughs> minus the podium yeah. no but again like obviously uh, it's not that yeah big, big waiter yeah, yeah. <laughs> um no like we obviously can fit anywhere and also like the podiums for example like they're we just pick them up and move them mm. we'll, we'll go where is appropriate like there's certain venues um like can i name like venues like, yeah. is that weird? but like one i know we've spoken about before which is near where we are now which is at, at elmore court so at that venue they've got these massive windows um and 
actually when when it's like laid out like depending on how they have the layout i've seen like a horseshoe it can be a bit tight us being in the podium so like we'll work within the space so in there like they've got i think these massive like they're five windows so we'll all stand in the way like yeah we'll work in whatever the space is and we'll make it work like there's a venue in mallorca that we do a lot and they have um, a big fountain in the middle of where everyone sits and so like there um i have us all like at dinner sitting around the fountain because it looks My really nice so everyone can see and standing up on it Try not to fall in, um, you know, when everyone starts to get up. So yeah, like working with the space that's that's there really. So you said that you pick up the phone to some inquiries. Mm -hmm. So it seems like you're heavily involved in the booking process, which is quite rare for someone who's actually in the band as well. <laughs> <laughs> the rock star that you are. Do you feel like that's important um, throughout? Yeah, there's so there's a lot of us in the office, mm -hmm. firstly, and there's. Um, Again, like, I don't know how much people know, um, you know, about the, how these things run. I was saying to someone yesterday, like, people still come up to us, like, on the gig and, and I'd be like, um, what do you do Monday to Friday? Like, well, what, what, what do you think? This doesn't just happen. Like, yeah. So, um, like, yeah, I am in the office when I'm obviously not on stage. Uh, Bradley, my my father, is in the office every day. Then there's there's we got or on holiday, or on, <laughs> doing site visits, <laughs> or visit. doing site visits. Yeah, site visits. Um, but um, uh, yeah, we have like obviously. Uh, event managers in the office we have a, a travel person who deals with all our flights and all the rest of it mm. we have a wardrobe person that deals with all of our clothes Ooh, give us your fun facts oh my fun my fun fact so last year um we had approximately six thousand suits dry clean wow. so, yeah but you know things people don't think about yeah I mean, obviously other costs and you know for these sure. things take the clothes is something that like i mean it takes so much time to prep them for each job yeah bet. and like um each a band member wears uh, three outfits. So, um, you know, you're talking about like, oh, my maths isn't very good. I did get an A in GCSE maths, but it's a long time Prove ago. it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. anyway, a lot of clothes, whatever it is, a lot per week, you know. There might be hundreds going out in one week and then they got to come back Monday and then go to dry cleaners and and, and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of us in the office. Um, we, we each like have our own clients as well that we look after. But if the phone rings and I pick it up and take an inquiry, then obviously then we all chip in and so who gets to choose what you wear does a client ever get a so input? Um, says the question styling well. lady yeah. who cares what it looks so, like. i'm just like curious yeah. yes and no so firstly um i say i say yes and no because yes because if they don't want something then obviously we won't wear it so if they say like i hate the red dress or you know i'd, I'd rather you didn't wear that of course we're not going to wear it um, I can't buy clothes for every single job. Yeah. And also they're, all the suits are like bespoke to each band member. Mm. Um, same goes for the dresses. So it's more of a case of, yeah, if you don't like it, then obviously let us know. But like very, very but occasionally they'll say like, oh, can you all wear black? Well, we're probably gonna be black anyway. Yeah. Like, but um, you know, yeah, there, there's been the odd one. Or like, it's a pink theme. Can you wear a pink bow tie? Like, yeah, if I've got it. Then yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I can but, find one in my 100 bow ties I yeah. own. But equally like we, we I think, without a doubt like we are one of the best dressed bands because Ooh. we take the clothes very seriously oh, I agree. I agree. yeah yeah no i, just, I, agree. No, I think we, this is why i say they are the best yeah oh thanks they but like and again we're doing three outfit changes a night like everything's thought about um and actually a little bit of history so uh, before um my dad came into the business he was in menswear that's what he did oh, oh there, we yeah. go. there we go so Makes that's sense how we, we we did it that's how we do all of that yeah nice i have a question for you so Give us like three top tips for a packed dance floor. So obviously number one, book the function band. That's <laughs> goes what, what about if people, what first of all, if you were booked, or yeah, second yeah. of all, if they don't have the budget no, of course. for that. So I think, um, as I said before as well, like dance floor size is, is a huge factor in that. Um, that making sure that it doesn't feel too empty and that everyone's together. Also, where the bride and groom are is so important. Yeah. I was going to say this before, you know, like they'll get out of the day what they want. So if they're on the dance floor, so will all the guests be. If yeah. they're outside drinking, so will all the guests be. So, you know, if you want a party, then make sure you're there partying with everybody. Um, bar being in the room, huge one there. Same like if people have evening food or things like this. Like if you have a pizza van outside, everyone's going outside. That's just what's going to happen. So I always so, make people do it in between a set. And, me, and that's what I was going to say as okay, well. So fine, it's about, good. yeah, doing that. Before and like, I start recommending that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for example, if we, let's say someone's got three hours worth of dancing, like this is me personally, like other people do it differently. But let's say they got three hours 
9 p.m. till midnight dancing. For us, we're going to do approximately two and a half hours of it live. So most of it would be live. Um, but then obviously you've got the DJ in the middle. Yeah, that bit in the middle, do your evening food then. Do those type of things then. Yeah, that that is that is very important. Time is so important. So like I said, they're like three hours of dancing. Like if, you, if your dance first dance is at seven till 12, just be aware no one's dancing for five hours. It's just not going to happen. It's just not possible. You know, 100 people. If you go to a club with 10,000 people, then yeah, the floor's fat packed because everyone's going everywhere. Mm. But 100 people, you know. So it, I, I always think personally, three and a half hours max is really So is that three and a half hours though of all music, music playing or does that yeah, include the break? No, that includes a break. So I would say like, let's say your first dance is half eight. Yeah. Then you're then from for if it's me, it's different other bands because most other bands aren't performing as as doing as much as we're doing. It's not to say there's anything wrong with that, but a lot of them are doing two one hours or two yeah. two forty five minute sets. For me, then let's say the first dance at half eight. Then we're gonna go half eight till half nine live. DJ half nine till half ten, and then half ten till twelve live. So again, majority's live. I've obviously got to take a break just so we don't die in the middle of it. Yeah, sorry. Boring. But you know that's what I'm saying. If it's that's if it's three and a half hours. If it's three hours, you know, like there's different ways to, to do it. But I, I definitely think like a longer day is not a better day. It's just more tiring. I'm fucking loving this because <laughs> Georgie <laughs> likes to push people's ceremony earlier so they have longer to dance in the evening. No, 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 and no, have, no, yeah, no, she's yeah, lying actually. Yeah. So it fucks lying. up my styling in the days. Yeah. Yeah. Cuts me an hour. Want so my <laughs> issue is when they have even, a big chunk of evening guests coming, okay. you cannot invite evening All guests right. from 8.30 okay. p.m. right. So that, that's also a good point. And one I've heard you discuss on the podcast. Oh, well. like, yeah, so evening guests. So uh, this is a really difficult one because yeah, that is what happens is that, I, yeah, I get you don't want to invite them at half eight or later. Yeah. Like, so, but personally, I would say don't run your wedding around your evening guests. Like, yeah, if you want them, they're great. But like, don't worry about what time they're getting there. Worry about it being the right amount of time. What? So now because evening guests are coming at seven, we've got five hours of, of dancing like it's too much stop laughing in my ear what but, i'm saying is i d i don't mind evening guests because i think <laughs> evening guests shut up can arrive whilst there's nothing happening is 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 the key in terms of so that they're not walking into yeah. a packed dance when they're trying to join or a wedding break no, they I, can do whilst whilst people are setting up if they're yeah, yeah that's what i mean so you always I mean, want we them would to already arrive be set up all day but in like, the gap. So, like like cocktail hour I've when seen, they arrive yeah. yeah or i've seen like them arrive at seven and they, um, you know, they have maybe like little desserts. Like, well, if the guests having dessert, they maybe have like little, um, you know, bowl food desserts or something. Nice. And then they're sometimes in there to hear the speeches or whatever. But we, we had. Literally, a... You've just made that up. No, no, I'm not. It's like no, a I random haven't. one-off wedding. That. No, Don't no, start. No, because people are going to get scared that they're going to have to start giving them bowl food when well, they turn okay, up. Well, okay, fine. Don't do that. Have no bowl food. <laughs> I don't know. Do whatever you want. But actually, with I remember, like, because I always say to people, "Have you got evening guests?" Because I want to know like numbers and yeah. things. Mm. And um, I remember once they, uh, I said, oh, have you got an evening guest? They said, yeah. I said, how many have you got? And um, they said, a oh, one. Oh, <laughs> one. One. I said, hope yeah. they turn up. We really didn't <laughs> like I said, them. why don't you just invite them all day? And they're like, oh, we're not that close. Um, but imagine being that one person, you turn up and you're the only. Like, yeah. Yeah. Why are you all sat down? Why is everybody else's name on this table plan? Apart but from I mine? did one once, they had 220 evening guests. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wow. I like so that. I get that, that you can't invite all of them. They're yeah. about 100 in the day anyway. Jeez. So you just said you'll always be set up. So do you only mm. do full days? Yeah. So we basically, uh, firstly, I don't want to, no one should be setting up in front of your guests. That obviously doesn't look good. Yeah. Um. But we we start from when guests enter for, for dinner or wedding breakfast or whatever people like to call it. So like literally from when they're entering the ballroom, the marquee, whatever mm -hmm. it might be, then we're on the podiums. We've got dinner between courses and then obviously all the party sets. But again, that is different to most how most bands work. But yeah, it's a, look, it's a long setup as well. We're putting a lot of sound equipment in. What do you do if the ceremony and the wedding breakfast are in the same room? How long do you actually take to set up? So, um, well, if you've obviously got drinks reception in between. Yeah. But it, look, it depends on the setup, but really sound, most of the sounds gonna would have to be in, but it wouldn't affect the ceremony. And then like the, I mean, sound check take, for us takes five minutes. Okay. Because it's, it's all digital nowadays, so it's very easy. Um, but yeah, it's just setting the actual kit up. But yeah, we wouldn't want it to be seen. But yeah, in, if let's say you've only got yeah, a cocktail yeah. hour, then probably we, they probably can't set everything up in an hour. But well, yeah, if they've got to set up the tables and stuff like that, I'm guessing that's yeah, when you come yeah, in. Yeah, for and a big turnaround. Well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it just depends. So no pressure. 
But what are your like <laughs> go to five songs to get it like going? To get it going. Okay. So again, like dinner for me is my favorite bit because everyone's there and everyone's together so we want to do those epic moments of like everyone getting involved and being on their so singing and, along those yeah ones. that those yeah. kind of sing-along-esque um love like we i love doing stuff that maybe you wouldn't expect here so i mentioned gangster's paradise before yeah. like uh, who plays at our wedding but it's i mean it's one of those that as soon as you hear that first note of those strings, you know what's going on. Yeah. So I love those kind of songs. We love doing Teenage Dirtbag as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it has that very nostalgic feel to it, that kind of thing. Obviously, you can't go wrong with your Can't Take My Eyes Off You and your Sweet Carolines. But You've got four. People, You've just given four out of the five songs four. now. Well, I'm not saying yes or no to that. <laughs> um, but uh, those, those kind of tunes, like if you want if you want a fifth, like, I mean, I couldn't really narrow it down. Me personally, I love, I love Hey Jude, but... Yeah. Um, and any of those kind of songs. But as I said, for us, we want to try to keep it um, not your standard. And like any videos you see and we're doing Sweet Caroline, obviously that's what that client wants. And that's, you know, we'll do, do they whatever. get quite a big choice? Yes. Of song. Got, yeah. So actually with music, it's all totally bespoken to each client. Again, very different um, in how we do it. So like six, eight weeks before the wedding, the... Um, Hopefully they we like love clients come into our offices so we can actually meet with them properly. Otherwise we'll do like a Zoom call or whatever. And we'll go through all their like musical loves, hates, must haves, first dance, last song, etc. And make it really, really personalized to them. So they might say, like, we love Disney and we hate the garage or whatever it might be. Or we like both or whatever it, it might be. Um a so yeah. mermaid garage version. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, and again, there's we've got viral videos of us doing Little Mermaid. But I don't want people looking at it thinking, oh, God, they sing, they sing Disney every... Obviously, I don't. That, that's what they wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Disney yeah. band. Yeah. yeah. I get that a lot with, like... Because obviously, as a planner, I give people um, suppliers and things. And they go, oh, no, because I don't like um, Wave yeah. Town. I'm like, but that's what they wanted. That was yeah, what that bride exactly. asked for. That's relevant. Yeah. And, yeah. It's all, and that's the thing. It is, it's personal. And it's a really lovely meeting. We basically just drink loads of champagne. And... Um, you know, like we want to get to know them. We want to be able to jump up and down with them on the day. And, and we want like their personalities to be reflected in the music yeah. as well. I think it's important rather than it just be playing random songs that they don't care it about. It feels very like personalized. Yeah, I was say, should you pick songs? But it's not a lot of bands you book through agents mm -hmm. and third parties and you yeah, don't now, get that see, bespoke I, experience. Yeah, look, I don't know. I don't know about really that other side. And also, I don't know, like, um, you know, I can name you a hundred photographers, but I've never worked with another band. I've never met another band. Yeah, well, sure. I wouldn't be on the same <laughs> job. So I don't know how they work. But um, yeah, I don't know that relationship. I don't know if, if you're going for an agent, do you ever speak to the band? I don't know. You, you probably know better than me. But yeah, with us, like, it is that there's obviously dealing with us. Like, a little... Um, inside a secret to how we work is that Ooh, like so, <laughs> we, we actually Do we, we need don't to copyright know. zoom in Brian <laughs> zoom in on him <laughs> yeah, we can sell this yeah. no, so we actually we don't know what song we're doing next till the song before it's cool we all wear earpieces oh. so it's all called in our ears so the, the DJ or the musical director or whatever the, the setup of the band is at the time will be saying okay this is working and, and so we're going off the parameters that the client loves this and they hate that and so we're working in the middle of that and going okay well if they like Backstreet Boys, then they're gonna like whatever. Five. Like five. I was gonna say five. Oh God, but, look at yeah. us. So is it like yeah. based on how the like audience take a hundred percent? Yeah, because if yeah, they're so like it's totally organic. So it's like, okay, this is working, so let's go for this. And a lot of the stuff we do, a lot of the stuff that um has gone viral as well, it's all like our improvised. So we have this we have a little um game that we call R and B roulette that anyone that follows us will definitely know because we do it um a lot. And is this the one where you have to like you start with a dance move and then everyone like copies? Oh no, no, that's like, <laughs> no, that's something else. No, yeah. that's, a, that's another viral video. But yeah. No, oh God, does anyone think he's gone viral? Yeah. <laughs> Can um, you tell I watched the video? Yeah, I'm loving this. Good research. Um, no, so it's just we basically um, see how many R and B tunes we can get into one song. And but it's all improvised, so we don't know what each other is gonna do. Uh, and cool. so we're all it's trying. A little to, pitch yeah, yeah, maybe. So we're trying to like make each other laugh and catch each other out, and do because it's real. And then people are part of it, and they're like, "What song's coming next?" And you can see it on our faces as well. And that we have a few moments like that of those kind of mashups, and and you know we love that that 
that real effect of, and people feeling like they are part of it. Yeah. She's like, no way, oh, tune. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and we're the same. You'll see our face, like one of the boys was singing, like, oh my God, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Right. Still that for next week. Yeah. And <laughs> um, we've had so many questions come in about bands, music, and music, music, mm-hmm. and things like that. So I thought we'll just like kind of quick fire you mm-hmm. on some of them. Band or DJ? Obviously, band. Obviously. Do you ever. Well, I'm biased. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would you ever recommend a DJ? Um, what instead of them booking us? No, instead of them booking a band. No, so um, so we have the best of both in that one of our setups is is uh, what we call DJ live. So you have a DJ live instruments, live uh, singers. So you have the best of both. And when the band on, on, you have the DJ doing the DJ role. Um, but do you know what band or DJ? Whatever works for you and whatever works for your budget. Like, yeah. is, you'll have a great day if you have the choose the right music. Because I've done some weddings where they're not dance floor people and actually you'd be stood there singing to a, an empty yeah. dance floor but and you don't want to do that to either for those ones yeah <laughs> but us. if you know that they're not gonna yeah book. usually they book us because they want to go crazy but yeah yeah you do the odd or you do the odd um corporate and they're not interested and yeah, that's fine you know they're, they're enjoying it but yeah they yeah don't come and but that's the thing so not everybody has guests that are big party people that want to be getting up and standing yeah. and dancing so maybe they're the ones that need dj okay you slightly answer this but we're we're coming away from the wedding breakfast top three songs for a band to play to guarantee people onto the dance floor um okay um well it's a hot uh, no i just want three I songs know, i can give you three <laughs> songs but like i don't agree with these songs but uh, everyone will get on, go the on, dance go on. Floor. right mr Brightside. yeah i yeah. agree like i'm so done with it but everyone's gonna yeah. run to the dance floor um what else uh no, I can't think of it. Oh, Gimme, Gimme, Gimme. Actually, I've got to say, I love Gimme, Gimme, Gimme. I think it's a tune. Nice. Um, I actually wasn't like, I was so against ABBA um, at weddings. And what? Then, yeah, uh, which I know people love and people hate. Oh, um, but that is an absolute banger and everyone just comes. And also when, like the way we do, we do some cool mashups in it as well. Um, like that, um, what's that program that was just on? that Wednesday that song yes on Wednesday, yeah yeah you, know, you can get that in there um <laughs> so I'd say that's a good one and what else is that an instant dance any of the Motown classics uh like respect um, I mean that's not I'm a Whitney Houston Motown, kind of girl so. Whitney and Whitney yeah that's um, what I want my first dance is yeah. to be a Whitney Houston I want to dance what, to somebody so, oh, okay, dance to but I want yeah. it to start slow and then it's just got to go whack up. yeah <laughs> <laughs> me and Brian went for a lot of songs that came out the year we met Okay, nice. So that would be in our love what was, list. What, a long time ago. Yeah. We met, well, we met in 2010. Okay. And actually, fun fact, when me and Brian were courting, yes. we may or may not have had other partners at the time. So the song... <laughs> um, I, mean, I was 18 years old, guys. Calm down. What um, the song um, Forget You, you know, the CeeLo Green yes. one. That was like then. So I was like, this is brilliant. Was that your first dance? It, it was not. We had, um, we had Mumford and Sons, There oh, Will okay. Be Time. Yeah, yeah. Because nice. Brian's South African. And it sounds a little bit South African. And then there's a point. You're, you're going to get hate for that. I'm not, I'm not because it's from their South African. You're South African now, aren't you? I'm, I don't think that's how it works. My daughter is South African. But there's a bit where it's from their South African tour. So it's like quite, I don't know, it sounds good. But there's a point when it drops, when then everybody joined us on the dance floor. I just feel oh. like Usher. Usher's a good I one. I fucking love Usher. Usher, Usher Jason but Derulo. Usher, then they're all like, um, you remind me, burn. Yeah, they're, they're all like, very, like <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. think, quick, this is not a question, but for me, do you think people listen to the lyrics of the first dance? Nah. No, see, really. because somebody said to me the other day, we've got a first dance that we love, but it's not appropriate. It's about I breaking think, up. No, if you're having like my neck, my back, then yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> the first dance. Like, that yeah, would be great. Those lyrics probably aren't bad. We did actually, we did one once where their first dance was um, sexual by Naked. Nice. Yeah. Um, and which uh, I have to say, it was, um, it was wicked. Everyone was singing and along and it was really cool. But I was thinking like you're, you're dancing with your husband and your nan's watching you and it's like, I'm feeling sexual. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, each to their own. There was that Jesse Ware song, wasn't it? It was Champagne Kisses and everyone was like, this is about a breakup and everybody's having Yeah, but no one's listening to the word. Yeah, do. I don't think, it, look, if it's a song that means something to you, then have what you want. It's your first, like yeah. we'll learn whatever someone's first dance is. It doesn't make make a difference. Like, it's what you want, yeah. Is there ever a point where you've like, a song's coming up and you're like, fuck, I don't know the words. What, in the middle of the wedding? Yeah. Well, obviously, like, first up, we'll learn. We'll learn this stuff. Um, Do they ever whisper in your ear, sing, this bit, these are the next words? 
Do you no, get stage no. fright? <laughs> <laughs> do you do song requests on the evening? Yeah, but then obviously if I don't know it, then we just don't do don't it. Don't do it, yeah. yeah. But I mean, we know a lot. Obviously, we, we like, have like an encyclopedia in our brains. So that's how we can mm. be so organic. But like equally, like because the bride and groom have given us what they like, right. if someone comes over and says something that fits within that, then yeah, yeah cool. with pleasure. And if they don't, I'll just say the bride and groom hate that. Paid. How annoying are song requests? Oh, interesting. Oh, that's a good Are question. you just like, leave me alone I'm trying to sing I guess if I like the song then it's not that annoying <laughs> but I guess if you're singing I would never go over like, somebody singing excuse me well, that's excuse me people, get on my shoulders yeah. <laughs> people definitely forget that we're at work a million percent yeah. definitely forget. go on I feel like, like you've got a like story not. coming out of here uh, no not this. I mean yeah but like but just the way like people like we have this bit that we do where we all lay, lay on the floor and again 99% of the time people let us do it and it's really cool and it's just part of the, the show and it's great but then you'll get the odd person like trying to sit on you or whatever and like i just want to be like i don't turn up to your work and stand on your desk but then it's a different thing i get it yeah. and also people at their work aren't drunk and yeah you know, everyone's drinking feels like there's no rules doesn't it really yeah, yeah it is like i think there is a line but it very very rarely is it is it crossed mm -hmm. like like yeah we'll, we'll get on we know what people and it's fun yeah. and we like it. You have to take it with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Yeah. Everyone's if someone like smashed. dives on us and hurts us, which has happened, then we're not, <laughs> we're not so happy about it. But Fair. otherwise we are fine. Um, okay, another quick question. Can anyone stand on the podium? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. I'd it's never let anybody take my people up on podium. The yeah. I'd be on the podium. <laughs> Only if you're the bride. I feel like anybody who gets on the podium that's not the bride yeah, or groom yeah, is yeah, not really yeah, stealing yeah, the show. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask, where did the podiums God, come from? I've got from? like a million questions. Where did the podiums come from? Like what, what made it that your thing when you so were like, we actually, need to do this? So that was, that was, oh, I just hate saying this because he's just never going to let it go. But that was <laughs> probably my, my father. I was yeah, going to say, well, you, dad? <laughs> you don't realize like how I'll never now hear the end of this. But um, yeah, no, for my uh, brother's wedding, which was I don't know, about eight, eight or nine years ago now, we, um, we just thought of, doing it and it would be a nice thing. And back then, I mean, they're really small. We just made these little blocks and which are incredibly dangerous. Now they're like really cool, mm. mirrored, LED. And, um, but yeah, then it was pretty dangerous. And, um, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's how it started. And actually the sitting down in dinner, that's, that's a good story of how that started because we did, not too sure whether I should tell this, but we, we did a wedding, uh, I don't know how many years ago now, five, six years ago. One of the singers was, didn't feel very well. Um, we, we, we sorted it again, bride and groom didn't know, um, and we covered it and it was absolutely fine. Um, like the same amount of people, but that must be one of the pros of having so many people. That, that there is, that yeah. You can... Yeah, it is. It is. I could go on a huge segue here, but I think just very quickly when you're booking a band, if you're booking like, um, you know, these little bands that it's just the five of them, like mm. you need to be aware if one of them's ill, one of them goes and does something, then they're not turning up. And I had the, we had three times uh, this week people ring to say their band's cancelled for um, two weeks time because the lead singer's got a tour with someone. Um, obviously, that's not going to happen with us because we'll sort it out. And things do happen, God forbid, like they do happen. Like we've had people have accidents on the way or a death in the family, you know, yeah. the, on the day of or whatever. So like, that's why whoever you have of, of the function band like is amazing and you'll have like the most amazing day. But so yeah, she didn't feel very well. So I managed to get cover anyway. And, um, but then uh, we, we, we were at the, you know, we were in the middle of the wedding and I said, go home, I've sorted it. I've got someone here, I'll cover you. No one will know all the rest of it. As she's walking out the door, I'm like, oh, she knows the first answer. No one else knows the first answer. Oh. Just realized like no one knows it. So I was like, I, I'm can you just do the first answer and then go, I really need to do it. And she was like, yeah, of course, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to stand up. I'm gonna have to sit down. I said, sit down, that's going to be so weird if you're sitting down. I said, all right, we'll all sit down. All of us will sit down. So that's what we did. And we all sat on the edge of the stage and all the band. And it looked so cute. Yeah. And the first dance, it was a really like special moment. After the bride and groom were like, that was amazing. I've never seen do that. <laughs> and I was like, right now. So now we always sit down at dinner, not in the first dance, but at dinner, we all sit down. And I just think it's like it a lot really more intimate. intimate. Yeah. yeah. Then I stand in your face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. I like, I like it when you all sit down. I yeah. have more quick fire questions. You, you're like us. You're not quick fire at all. No, sorry. Yes. <laughs> 15 seconds per answer. Yeah. 
Should you try and cater for everyone's song choices? No. Is that better? Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but you should, like, worry about yourselves. Right, here we go. Worry about yourselves. Like, bride and groom, cater for your... But, but say if the bride and groom have a very specific... Okay. They love Disney. They only want yeah. Disney. Do you have to be like, well, do you want your guests to have a yeah, good no, time? Yeah, no, no, there is that, yeah. And I do often say, like, it wouldn't be fun if it's just the two of you on the dance floor. You want everyone there. But most people, most people are very, mm. like, they want everything. They want, they're understanding. They want everyone. Yeah. But but actually, I've had people. Oh my my sister loves. No, this wait, song. wait 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 wait. Hold yeah. up hold up. Why you're faffing around? <laughs> my sister loves that song. Can we do that? But you know, like then I wouldn't worry about doing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fair, a bit much. Fair. Or if they want Mumford and Sons, bore you to sleep. <laughs> it was a really good song. Yeah, I was. I fell asleep. But you didn't. Every actually, people text me after like, "What was your first dance song? We want to play it." And I'm like, mm, "Yeah, started it." So if Mumford and Sons got a few more hits from that. You're welcome. <laughs> How do you feel about having Spotify playlists from start to finish? As in for the whole wedding? Yeah. Or as in like as a guide to your DJ or to your band? Both questions. So some people, if, so we always say if you're having a band or DJ in the evening, play music all day long, even if mm -hmm. it's just through Spotify playlist. 100% agree. Okay. First of all, do you agree with that? 100%. Okay. Yeah. So you never want silence. Like mm -hmm. even if background, this is important. No one cares what the background music is. Like, guys, don't don't worry about it. Don't think so much and make this whole thing. Like, it's just you want something. It's something's better than nothing. People spend hours yeah, doing this honestly, playlist. Don't. I always like, don't say worry. acoustic covers. Put nah, acoustic no covers into Spotify and you won't even know. But you You're want welcome. Something. <laughs> yeah. If if it's silent, then that's what you notice. Yes. Um but yeah, in terms of like because people often say, Oh, can we send you a Spotify playlist? Yeah, with pleasure, because again, it, it just gives me more of a of a uh, thing to go by of what they're what they're loving here, yeah. and then I think we can't do live. Our DJ can play. But I think yeah, if you've got a DJ and you trust them as well, like say look, this is a guy, this is what we like, and then if you've got haven't got a band or a DJ, then that's the music you want. Then yeah, do that. Talk to me about sets because mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> we really just met this. <laughs> sets. Everyone yeah. gets really stressed out about the sets and when to have them and how yeah. often to have them and how is it many two one break? hour or yeah. three forty five minutes. Which is better? So I think, obviously, I, I um, spoke about this a little bit before. So I think it, it it depends on your timings. You know, if you've got two 45-minute sets in an eight-hour period, then it's not going to feel like very mm. much. But if you've got two 45-minute sets in a two-hour period, then it's pretty much perfect. I think, it, it yeah, it depends on the timings. And that, for us as well, we say to the clients, like, this is what I think we're going to do. But on the day, I'm going to see where you are. Mm -hmm. You might be running late, might be running early. Um, and then we'll just go with the flow. But equally, you want... When the when the band's on in particular, you want it to be a packed floor. So if so, the the typical that I find at least is that it's either you book a two one hour sets or three forty five minute sets. Okay. And I, being me, would normally sway people towards two one hour sets because I feel like the band actually get a chance to get going. And mm. which, if you had to pick one of the two, which work better band so, wise? Um, firstly, that's not how we work. So yeah. it's so that it's slightly different, but. Um, I, again, I'd go back to it would be based on their timings because yeah, three forty-five might work depending on what they do. Like we always, if we can, we like to end on a seventy-five or a ninety minute. We like yeah. to try and do like a half ten till twelve or quarter to eleven till twelve, um, like as a really big you know end set. Um, do you go on past midnight? Not live, but um, if if they want the DJ to go not on, even there, it's an one option. more song, song all the way to the end. One more song. We're just good at timing that we know they're going to say one more song. So. Uh, okay, no. Okay. Well, what if, they, also, what if lot, they don't? Well, a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> then I'll go, you want one more? You shut up. <laughs> but obviously, a lot of venues, uh, the license is still 12. Boring. Yeah. That leads me on to this I've next got, question. Oh, I got, no, I got a better one. I got a better one. No, my one first. What, no. How do you feel about the stigma of bands being high maintenance with like riders? And... Okay, that is, that is, a, that's, that's, fun. I've said that's a good question a lot, but they are good questions. Um, so, <laughs> well done, guys. Yeah. Mine's a bit more juicy. Mine's, yeah. mine's very practical. So you so, do the juicy. I spoke to a planner. Definitely shouldn't be saying this story, but I. Georgina uh, yeah. Rosa. Wait, yeah. were they bad? Yeah, it? yeah. No, no, no. The planner's lovely, by the way. Okay. Uh, Nothing to do on. with that. There's actually. Um, Who's a, the best um, wedding planner you know? Corporate. Uh, you. Thank you. So it's actually. <laughs> well, Say it is, louder again. Say it louder, Brian. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was actually a like a corporate agency for a. It was for a, a corporate event. Um, and she said, um, oh, are you guys really high maintenance? Like, do you have a crazy rider? I personally think we have the easiest rider in the world. 
water and a hot meal. Like, that's it. Like, and oh, wow. I thought you'd want more. Nah. Yeah, but whoa, 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 whoa. Dressing room? You're lying. Yeah. Oh, and Dress- right, right, there we go. Well, what is that? How, well, honestly, well, where no. do you want me to sit? Heated? On your top Heated table? dressing room? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd like heat, yes. Okay. That's right, happened many more. times when there's no heat. Does it have to be indoors? Yeah, a chair would be nice. Yeah. What's the worst dressing room you've been to? I got given a toilet the other day for 10 of us. But anyway, that doesn't matter because we'll get on with it. It's your day. But yeah, obviously. A it's room, your day, but it'll be shit. A, a room, hang on. But, even, but your photographer and videographer need to eat somewhere. Yeah, no, agree. You know, so no, but they'll sit in the bar. Yeah, but they shouldn't. They've, they've got to get changed. That's no, no, no I know. Yeah, I'm agreeing changed, with you. It's yeah. fine. But no, I think for us to, like, a crew room to get changed in, a hot meal and water. And yeah, if you want to give us soft drinks, great. But like, we don't, we're not asking, like, you have to. Like, um, and also, like, when we say hot meal, like, Give me lasagna. Like, I don't need what you're eating. Like yeah. whatever. We we're not we're there to work. Like but pretty we, easy then I'd say. I think it is easy. Yeah, and she was like, oh wow, I thought it was gonna be um, a lot worse than that. She said we had someone recently. At, she said I can't say who. I don't know who it is by the way. She was like, I can't tell you who it is. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, we'll make someone out. Genuinely, yeah. <laughs> no, no, we don't. And um, <laughs> and their rider, she said they got through the rider, and they had to. This is mental, by the way. They had to. Um, uh, her and like her colleagues had to sit in the office, go online, and pick the appropriate escort to be waiting in the dressing room for the shut for the person. Uh, what do you mean? What yeah. pick them from where? Like I don't know. He sent like, oh, this is I, I don't know. I, I, An I, escort. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How crazy is that? What a yeah. quick little break, banging yeah. the break. Yeah. Pat, that is that is uh, that I was told to because I was picturing a catalogue, which is I. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you wants to yeah. be in the catalog. <laughs> I don't want to be in it. I want to kick the person. Yeah. It was just a Ford Escort. That you know, is yeah. no, mad. How crazy is that? Yeah. Okay, my question is more boring than that, but it's really important because actually that this happens a, a lot. TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether I can say that. So. It's too late. You've said it. Okay, so does a noise limiter at a venue affect performance? So, on the whole, like you, it, it, <laughs> yes. you should be able. You should be able to if you have the right band, you have the right setup. You should be able to deal with it. My main top tips, if you have a venue with a limiter, um, is firstly, you probably can't have a drum kit. Get that out of your head. And that's why we actually came up with this DJ Live setup, which is the best of both. And then you've got like, there's no drums and there's no bass in it. So the track is doing that bit of the job. But you know, you can't turn a drum kit down. The drum kit is as loud as it is. <laughs> yeah. And then you sound check everything else to it. So you, if you've ha- got a drum kit in, in a venue with a limiter, you're most probably going to have an issue with it. So that'd be the first thing. The second thing would be like, um, really you need like, you need sound crew there. So for us, we have, two techs at least on each job, like obviously helping dealing with everything. But there was a lot of bands that they'll do the sound themselves. The problem is, is that during the night your ears adjust. And so you turn it up and you turn it up and then you set the limiter off. When we're in a venue with a limiter, one of the sound guys jobs is to stare at the limiter all night. And hence why it won't go off because then if it gets close, we'll deal with it. So that's another one like monitoring like so when you see like the in-ear monitors like you've got to have that if you've got floor monitors you're just adding more sound to it so there are like ingredients and bass probably needs to come down a little bit but there's plenty of of venues with limiters and there's plenty of people that have seen us at these venues who probably have no idea that yeah i was gonna say is it because you're the band that you can hear it and see it no i wouldn't want to say on i know there's venues out there where we're the only band that has never set limiters off like so but that's because we're following certain rules. It's because somebody's so, literally stood there looking at it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I don't want to say like, oh yeah, no, it won't be a problem. It won't be a problem if it's done in the right way. Then it really shouldn't be. But I can't obviously speak on behalf of So of is there a time else. that you ever have to say no to a venue because of a limiter then? Um, n- not really. Like there's... It, it, it's a, there's yeah. workarounds. On the whole, it should be work. Yeah. And still going through it, by the way. We're not not going through it. You have to go through it. And if it cuts, then it cuts. But we haven't been in that situation where it's cut. Less boring answer, but yeah. Yeah, sorry. Last quick fire question. He's <laughs> braced for it. What is the last song you play? Um, Ooh. Well. And this is not one more song. This yeah, is the, the last, last song. This is the one well, more Well, that's song. the bride and groom's choice. Yeah, but ah. don't give me that. What, but what's that your is... go-to? If they say you do what you oh, think. Oh, if they say you choose. Well, again, like I want to go on what they like and what they hate. So I'll work within that. 
but something anthemic, something crazy, something on like the Don't Look Back in Anger or the yeah. Gimme Gimme Gimme. Or one I really love doing is is High Lighthouse Family. Oh, yeah, it's such a nice song, and everyone sing together, and that kind of that kind of vibe. Um, just yeah, where everyone's together. I'm sure that I've got plenty more that I now can't think of. <laughs> any. Uh, oh, don't don't want to miss a thing. That's cool. Aerosmith. Yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. remember what our last song was at our wedding, but we okay. had a very similar thing. Everybody all we got together. Cool. It was the last, song, and it's like it will probably stay with me forever. It's like yeah. the best moment of our wedding was that last song. I mean, we played a few songs after on the. We did um pony, you know the. Oh yes, genuine. So Brian's yes. song, yeah. So, <laughs> but like the proper yeah. last song of the night has got to be pretty. Not epic enough to get everybody da- like dancing. You want him it singing feels, and, and know, yeah, both. Like, yeah, but swing. equally, you want to end it on a high. That, yeah, see, I think that's so important. Is that people? You know, oh, I want to go till three a.m. Like. End it on a high yeah. of everyone there and celebrating together, not 12 people left on the dance floor. Yes, mm-hmm. dancing around a handbag, yeah. Um, <laughs> so is actually that what is we what exactly we... did at your wedding after the battle <laughs> started. Yeah, we did waiting for the next letter. We were waiting taxi. for the taxis and we had like a bags in the middle of the floor. Whereas Brian yeah, yeah, sat in the middle on a chair oh, getting yeah, Brian, danced on. Brian getting <laughs> danced on. Um, so I'll be honest, the real reason we brought you here is because we want some gossip and we <laughs> want some stories. So... I'm opening the floor up to you to okay. give us some juice. What's your best story? I don't know how, how juicy um, they'll be, juicy. but I have some really good, I have some good stories. So one of my like favorite, like, cause this is innocent really. No one, like, yeah, it's, it's, this is a good story. Everyone's turned off already. Yeah. <laughs> Dan's really worried no, about offending story. you guys. Yeah. And we've tried to explain no, that no, you no. don't get offended by nothing. Stay, stay, you'll like this story. So <laughs> please um, stay. we did a, yeah, please. We did a <laughs> wedding last year. And they had, um, they didn't have a, a, a planner. They just had the like the event coordinator at the venue. It was a really lovely. Can I girl. just ask, what's, how do you feel the difference of a, a coordinator at a venue and a wedding planner? Um, it depends. Again, it's going back to like different agendas. But like, yeah, obviously the event coordinator is more worried. Is you know dealing with the food Noise and all the best things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out. Um, no, but like, no, we look, we love working with plans. We love working with everyone. We just wanna, we just wanna, we're all on the same side, aren't we? And just wanna make it special. Mm. But you know, even if you're there, there's still someone there from the venue or from yeah, the yeah. caterer or someone that we're dealing with. Um, yeah, no, we like. That was the wrong answer. Try yeah. again. What's better? Um, event coordinators hate them. Yeah. Just put Ge- Georgie. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, uh, carry on. Um... <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So um, they had the, this this coordinator. Well, actually, I'd love to know what you would have done in this, this okay. situation. But bear in mind, like, this wasn't the planner. So, like, this was not their responsibility. So about but 20... whose responsibility is it? Then? Nobody's. There is Well, the listen person. to the story. Then yeah. you'll know oh, who's it's Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> trying to back you up here. <laughs> So, um, well, yeah, I mean, I've never heard of this in, in 21 years of being in the industry. So the um, it was now about 20 minutes before the ceremony and the registrar hadn't arrived yet. So the um, the event coordinator, she goes up to the bride's room and she says, hey, can I just check with you? Do you know when like your registrar is going to be here? And she goes, what's that? <gasps> she didn't book it. And, she didn't book it. <laughs> and she goes, your registrar, the person marrying you she goes do we need that and she's like oh my god yeah oh my god you need you, you you're not gonna get married today you can't get she's like oh, okay well, that's fine like she's so chilled about it she goes can you just do it <laughs> okay so this is what i'm saying would you do it so she's like oh i can't do it and she goes look we won't tell anyone go on google find like the, what they say like find the spiel and then just just everyone will think that it's happened so this poor event coordinator she goes on and um, the bride like walks down the aisle and she does the whole thing like oh. and now she has been a wife and she wasn't actually so even married so i had similar and very nearly so a registrar came what like they come as twos one had come and she was like the other lady's not here she's yeah. not got and she was like can you read it the, his, and i was like yeah i'll read it oh, i don't really? mind reading it because she obviously has to do the legal bit yeah, yeah, yeah. so i'm then thinking fuck like can I remember all the bits? I'm like, <laughs> I, re- I overthink people's names. So yes. I would really worry about saying people's names. And then literally about five minutes before the ceremony, the registrar came and I was like, half of me was like, thank God. And then the half was like, oh, I really wanted to do a ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I, so I do think in that situation, like, I've been in a wedding coordinator before and I'd be like, what time have you booked your registrars for? Well, yeah. yeah and actually that's a, that's a Surprised good- they slipped you know, through the net. Yeah, well, but you wouldn't know if you're, if you're bride and a groom, like, why would you, 
you might not mm. realize that like why yeah you maybe they said what things? time's your ceremony yeah, yeah and maybe sure. like just the right what questions. time would you like to get married i'll do it yeah. for you i'll do it I'll, i'm gonna i actually have my wedding script on my website so if I, if i ever got really stuck i just read out my wedding and be like do That's you brian hilarious. i mean uh Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah just read that out yeah god okay so uh, i love how chilled she was about it though she was so chilled and um shout yeah, out, to, the shout out to, to, to both of them like they're both absolute legends and it was so they must have then got married wedding. after just yeah. randomly yeah, no, I love yeah. that. It was amazing, amazing. A lot amazing. of people would have gone, nah. No, that you'd be But yeah, not. I think that's what, like, that's, but that, but that's why it got to that point because she's so chill. Yeah. But I, yeah. this is, I try and say to couples all the time, like, the, they really worry about the worst things that can happen. And I always say there's, there's nothing really that can happen that would write off the day. Yeah. If the celebrant, if a, a registrar or somebody didn't come, somebody will do it. If the band didn't turn up, you would play music. Like, it's not going to be the day you plan to do, but nothing can really. I mean, obviously, we're obviously, up, yeah. the yeah, you'll turn up, and yeah. it would be ruined if you weren't there. But <laughs> there's, you can always. And the sound guy, like, guy, don't remember he's the one that's got a stare. So watch, I can watch that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this is great. Um, another story, please. What's the worst thing? Ah, uh, well, I've got one actually. It's not. It's not a funny or a happy story. <laughs> what is it then? I want it. <laughs> no, so actually, this is. Um, so we did a wedding last year. Um, in I think it was in Leeds in in a marquee and it was phenomenal. I actually need to re look up those videos from it because it was it was an unbelievable wedding. And in the middle of the set, um, our someone basically shouted over to me and I went in the middle of doing the set, and our sound guy was having a stroke. Mm. Yeah, in the middle of the thing. Hold on, hold on, so, hold on. Is he okay now? Yeah, yeah he's fine. Okay, he's okay. okay. Cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so. Um, yeah, that's probably important. But I'll keep story, that bit in. Oh, you've ruined it now. You've ruined the ending. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. No, so um, he, but at the time he really was not. He, like, he was literally having it. Like, I don't know if anyone's ever had the mispleasure of, of seeing it happen, but it's a horrible, horrible thing. And obviously the wedding stopped and everyone was amazing. Um, like someone shouted out, like, is there a doctor? And someone was like, uh, it's too late. He's he's already gone. What? But they thought, the the band thought that they meant the, the, the sound guy had gone. gone. Oh my God, they were freaking, like literally people were like right. sobbing and hyperventilating and like, yeah. But no, the doctor had gone. And um, then I think that um, a uh, ambulance was going to be about an hour. So the event coordinator there, um, who was lovely, she um, she took him um, to the hospital and they literally said like, that's what saved him. Like, wow. But so that whole thing's happening. It's obviously like, hor- it doesn't matter who it is. Like it just happened to be like one of my crew, but you know, whoever it was, it would have been horrible. And the bride and groom came over and they were like, Dan, we don't expect you to get, there was about 45 minutes left. They're like, we don't expect you to go on. And I was like, no, it's your wedding day. Of course we're going on, let's get him to hospital. But, and they're like, you really don't have to. I'm like, honestly, like, of course we are, it's your day. So um, that, which I thought was very sweet of them. Anyway, this guy comes over and he goes, all right, mate, I'm sure you're sad about your friend now, but it's time to get on with it. This is someone's <gasps> wedding. And I was like, oh. Oh, I'm going to oh, put you okay. in the face. All right. Yeah. I just obviously just kept yeah, totally calm. And obviously, as soon as as soon as soon he went, and in the end, it probably only stopped for about 10 minutes by the time we got him out. And then, you know, we carried on. And it was it was amazing. And thank God he was okay, um, which we had the news of and we announced on the mic to oh cute yeah yeah so but like i can't believe like i couldn't like at no point was i not going to carry on yeah, yeah obviously we're going to carry but on. So to tell you to not. yeah <laughs> but you're like whoa hang on a guy's literally we're literally watching him like um go through it so wow. yeah that was pretty that was pretty crazy what a, a crazy crazy story once was we were on stage and i could smell well, it was in a marquee and i could smell burning and it got to the point that it was so bad that um that I ran like basically where you had the stage and then the kitchen was behind us um like in the marquee that obviously you couldn't see it so I like ran off just to see what was going on and the kitchen was on fire it set a light and the um the gas canister had set set a light and I genuinely there was a minute where we all thought we were going to die like because this thing I don't know if it will explode or yeah. whatever and this thing's on fire and we have to tell everyone, everyone's running out, like screaming, running out. It was crazy. It was like a movie running, running away, waiting for the um, ambulance to come. Ambulance. What are the they doing? To come. <laughs> yeah, ambulance to find. Yeah, that was for the guy. Yeah, yeah, other guy. Yeah. That's why it took an hour for them to get yeah, to Yeah, you had to go via <laughs> that wedding to the, yeah. And anyway, and so um, then like all of a sudden this guy, he must have been very drunk. 
we just see this guy go running into the marquee and everyone's like, no, no. He goes in and he comes out and he's got the gas canister above his head while it's flaming and he just lobs it. Was yeah. it the Scottish dude? From- <laughs> oh, yeah. It was Dylan. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Um, yeah, and like, uh, anyway, Fire Brigade came in. It was all fine in the end. And actually, my DJ came back on while everyone was making their way back in and getting over the shop. My DJ um, started the music and he started with, uh, we didn't start the fire. Nice. <laughs> Nicely Genius. done. Yeah, Genius. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliantly yeah. done. Yeah, but yeah, that was... Quite like, dramatic. Crazy. Like, honestly, that bit... When when the gas canisters are like... Because yeah, actually... A, Apparently, I might be wrong here. I'm sure TikTok will tell me I'm wrong. But I don't <laughs> think they can explode. I think there's, that's... I would, you safety. would imagine they design They've got it safety like that. mechanisms. Yeah. But obviously when you're watching it and you're thinking, well, it's full of gas. My life could be over right before. Yeah. I'd go to the bar, get a, yeah, get a drink. Yeah, get me a maybe. drink. Yeah. Um, do you have any more juicy stories before I read you my bitches from a bride? So this is just quite funny on, on Insta, <laughs> is that, I don't know if you've ever had this as well, is that um, uh, I, we, put, we put up a... A story or something it was it was a story so we put an instant story up i wasn't in it which um again i alluded Shock. to it earlier <laughs> that's why it didn't get any good views did it <laughs> no that's why it did really well <laughs> um yeah no so i alluded to it earlier like i'm there is no important person everyone's like equal in the band like that like everyone's as good as the next or obviously we wouldn't have a business do people always ask for you though no 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 not at all no no we have the multiple the out <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, other than the person that just messaged yes, you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but so, but maybe like, it's probably not that clear. And also the Insta is a little bit biased towards me because- Is I'm, it because you post? <laughs> it's because I'm running the Insta. You're so, supposed to pick a me, no, 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 I try not to, but like, I'm the one making sure we're getting good footage. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's done on my phone and then I'm posting it. So, um, but, but it's not true. Like we're all on, on like the same amount of stuff. Um, but so I put this story up. I wasn't in it. And someone um, replied to it. They obviously meant to send it to their daughter. And, no. and it said, see, you don't have to have that annoying skinny one. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And I just replied, he's so annoying, that guy. We hate him. <laughs> and she replied, oh my God, is it you? <laughs> yeah. But you know, like, no, you don't have to have whoever. Like, And that's the other thing. Do people you, don't realize. Do you like, say that though? If somebody said, I, I, don't, I don't want like X, X, Y. Of course, yeah. Really? Yeah, if someone said, like, I don't want that person, like, then yeah, even if like, I don't need a reason. If you don't want someone, you don't want them, that's fine. Like don't not book us. Like we'll be, make it great for you. But like, yeah, mate, like you know, you can't please all the people all the time and we're not mm. all going to be everyone's cup of tea. And so I wasn't offended by a tour. I actually thought like- Thank you for ah, saying I'm skinny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. What, I me? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually thought more like, ah, oh, I bet people haven't booked because they thought that they've had to have a certain person, whether mm. it's me or someone else. And no, that's not the case. Like. Don't worry, someone said I was annoying on the podcast. They said the girl with the brown hair is annoying. (laughs) I was like, "Um, I own half the podcast. Sorry, hun, I'm going nowhere. (laughs) Don't be honest, neither of us own the podcast. It's Brian. Brian. Yeah, Yeah. it's all Brian. Um, What do you think? We spoke about it a couple of episodes ago about entertainment. And I don't know if you're going to answer this because you like to people, please. But um, some (laughs) singers and... Oh, okay, yeah. Musicians wear quite revealing outfits. Mm. And girls don't like it. And like as a bride, I'll be like, mm, honey, well, I think that's honey interesting. Bun. Firstly, I don't. I hope that we don't. I'm sure people will now say oh, um, that you do. Um, I mean, not me personally, but the girls. <laughs> the skinny well, guy was away. The yeah. guy had two he tight jeans great on. in that gown. Um, no, like I don't think. Um, I, I don't think that we do. Um, going back to people saying like, you know, choosing what you wear. Like mm. if someone says, oh, can you not wear a short dress? Um, but yeah, look, I, I, I get do understand. I hope Bradley would have want... had his input anyway and said, look, they're yeah. not wearing that. To... Yeah. No, no, but like, I don't think any of our stuff like that, but yeah. Actually, you have reminded me of something because- um, <laughs> There we go. The, the, yeah. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. bing. Um, right, what, I want to know what you think about this. Mirrored dance floors. Yeah, that's, surely that's bad. <laughs> yes, so- I For the Scottish wedding. <laughs> well, okay. Well, so we had recently, so I've had, I've seen it a few times and I was thinking, oh, it's weird. I remember one where there was like an 80 year old man who just spent the whole night looking down at the oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we did a wedding in Scotland recently, not the one that Dylan was at, but a few months ago. He's getting a lot of shout outs. He does. Dylan. You can sponsor the episode, Dylan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, a few months ago and they had this, and it, look, it looks amazing when you walk in because you've got the reflection of the ceiling and it looks really cool. Mm-hmm. But then of course, like, you know, it's it's a mirror. And so 
Can you actually see that much? You can see everything. Can and and of course, at this- Is it like, are you looking? Well, 80 year old dinner well, was. Well, hang on, at this wedding, obviously, it was the first time I'd seen it at a Scottish wedding and all the men are naked in kilts. And my female singer had the time of her life. I bet. <laughs> yeah, but I was Just the crazy. bottom match the top. But I, <laughs> does that work with men? No, but like, I mean, like, that's a good looking one. Face isn't. Okay. That's oh, you a, can definitely try before you buy them with a mirror dance That floor. is true. It's like a butter face. It's all good butter face. Okay, fine. <laughs> you said it. I'm not saying anything. So girls, yes to the mirror dance floor. No, Men. I mean, think, need, I think it's both inappropriate. And also with girls, like, as girls especially, look, boys, like, they, they didn't care. They thought it was funny. But, like, I've seen where the girls now won't go on the dance yeah. floor. Because they obviously don't want that, that to happen. I've no, literally never thought about no, that. No, I've never thought yeah. about it. Have you seen we, it before? We do mirrored aisles. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, okay. You can't, her dress, you can't. No, but what about all the people? Do, the, you, do you close off the aisle so yeah, guests yeah, don't walk yeah, down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mirrored aisle for ceremonies, but we don't really do mirrored yeah, dance yeah. floors. There you go. Interesting. Okay, I've got a bitches from a bride. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, you ready? Um, Buckle in, brace up. Right. Hello, ladies. Sorry, she didn't know you were here. Oh, um, love the podcast, <laughs> listening from Australia. Mm. We've decided to have a very small wedding with 40 guests only. Um, so immediate family, grandparents, close friends. My mum is struggling with the idea of a small wedding, bringing it up every chance she gets and going as far as to say it probably won't be a fun night and with less guests. <laughs> I have lots of ideas to make the night one to remember, but what would be your top tips for making a small wedding extra fun? So I feel like you need to give us some music tips and then maybe so we I've, we've done small weddings. Like What's the smallest wedding you've done? 32, I think. Okay. Not, nothing to do with COVID. This was um, pre-COVID. Um, and oh, it was amazing. Like, because it's only the people that you really wanted there. And um, so it was just really special and intimate. Again, I think now space is so important. You're not in a big room yeah. where you're floating around dance floor. You're not on a big dance floor where you're floating around, um, keeping everything in the room again, you know, cause you've got s so few people and time in. So it's going back to all of those things that I said. Um, but I, I don't see the problem with it at all. I think it's, I think it's nice. I think it's sweet. I think you do whatever. Did whatever you do anything works. differently? Cause they were a smaller group. Not really, but I felt like we, we were almost like family that night because it was so small. Mm -hmm. And so everyone got to know everybody. Um, yeah, yeah. For a hundred person wedding, which is pretty average. Yeah. Um, how many people would you say typically goes on the dance floor who's, who are engaged with you guys? Uh, look, it, it depends, but like most, like you want to end with most of them mm. up. They're always not going to get everyone up, mm. but yeah, the majority, 90% plus. But that's why, that's why for us, like we love the dinner set because it's the only time you can guarantee that every single person is in that room. Mm. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, they're can't. not going to the bar. They're just sitting having their dinner. So there that's is why that's no so excuse special. for you not to be on your chair. Get on your table. <laughs> that, that's why it's so special. You can guarantee that they're mm. going to be there. So it's, um, it's cool. But yeah, like the majority will always be on the floor. Yeah. On the floor. Any tips for small weddings? Um, just like personalization, I think as well. Like make, make like have an area like you did. You did like evening food. You had like yeah, drinks yeah. toppers on the cocktails to keep people drinking. You had a catch up bar for anyone that wasn't yeah. like drunk enough. There was like a little catch up bar. I just think- yeah. I would lean into more the fact that there are less people because you get, you get the benefit of being able to do more personalized stuff and write letters to people and um, actually have a chance to talk to everybody. Whereas you get some people that have 200 people weddings mm -hmm. and they don't get to lean into any of that because it's purely it's impossible. So like, please everyone. But I feel like you could really- Cocktail hour after wedding breakfast, yeah. his and her cocktails, which again can be expensive, but if you do it on a smaller people. scale. Yeah, I've got no issues. I had somebody message me the other day, um, his bride and I got legally married two weeks before and there were seven of us. And she was like, oh, we're just doing that for our wedding. How do we make it special? And I was, I was like, still do speeches, name cards, still decorate a table, yeah. still do like the same setup of a wedding. It doesn't matter how many people there are. No, yeah. it's again, like I know I say it a lot, but it is, it, it's just all personal to everyone. And you, there isn't a right or a wrong. Like there's, there's ingredients you can do to like help make it a better party, but you, you, you guys do you, whatever people want to do for their, their wedding day. It's their one day. So don't be having regrets that you didn't do it, what you, mm -hmm. how you actually wanted it. hundred percent. People, I think people are always going to have an opinion on your day. So you might as well just do yeah. how you wanted to do it anyway. hundred yeah. percent. You're going to annoy someone. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, we also have a final thing that we do on here, which is the tip jar. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's coming out of it. So do you want to be the person that pulls it out? 
yeah, and you can on. direct it to us. The tip and then jar, that is. Tip, yeah. tip jar. <laughs> Brian, can you pass us the tip yeah. jar? Oh, thanks. You might have been on screen then, Brian. Oh. <laughs> you have to do a bit of ASMR with it, though, because Beth loves to, like, rub the jar and open the thing quiet, like, slowly okay. and stuff. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll put... Uh, Oh, yeah. So what am I? What is, what is this? Just it'll be a Random word, topic. it'll be a phrase, okay. and then we'll just basically give a tip based on whatever that is. Oh, okay, fine. That was a little bit of ASMR. The word is toast drinks. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. That was easy. Well, actually, yeah. we can go into it a bit more. So, uh, first of all, think about when your speeches are. If your speeches are before food, toast drinks are going to be on the table, poured, ready. So. That does give me a little bit of a nick, I'm not going to lie. Because I have the most beautiful setup sometimes and then I have half a champagne glass poured and it Can I really tell you my, my pisses me off. On. And apologies to anyone I'm offending here. When the starters laid before guests come into the room. Yes. Right, hold on, hold on. Yes. I've hold seen on. it sit there for an hour before guests come in. <laughs> I normally wholeheartedly agree You've with you. You've got enough time. Yeah. You're making them get married at 10 no, no, in the no, morning no. anyway. <laughs> but... Some people that have, so I did a wedding where we had starters on the table. However, the starters were on these like big round things. boards around the center of the table. Right, okay. And to bring those in would have been well, an absolute ball ache. Yeah. But, but I think at a wedding- two minutes before they came in. I think at a wedding, it's nice to be served a drink. Yeah, but well, it's also because then, then what happens is then they come in and the bride and groom haven't done their entrance yet. Guests are just making their way in and you've got people sitting at the table eating. Mm. Well, you hope and that they're also, not dick. And also drinking the- the toast, yeah, because yeah. Yeah. why would they know that they're not to drink it? Mm -hmm. They don't say, welcome into the ballroom. By the way, don't touch the food or the drink yet. Yeah. <laughs> don't look at anything. Can yeah. we start? Um, yeah. That is something to think about. I, I like it when they, as people are coming in, they go around and pour. Yes, So that I then they they see it. Because I have been to weddings where they have poured it like half an hour before. And I'm like, that's not, that's yeah. not cold and fizzy anymore. The only thing I actually agree on is a pre-pour was, I saw it at Elmore. And it was really, really hot. They pre-poured everyone a glass of water because yep. everyone was yeah, like yeah, dying, yeah. going to be dying for a drink. But yeah, toast drinks. The other thing me. you can do is have them brought around on trays. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not. A tr I'm not just not a tray gal. I'm not a tray gal either. Only because I would be worried of holding it. Yeah, or a restaurant. But we we did um, toast. Make your own toast drink cocktails. That's cool. So cocky tails. cocky tails, because Brian was a cocky tail master, whatever he is. Brian has a cocky tail. Um, so we had these boxes go around <laughs> where people then poured their own, made them all, did the sugar and the thingy. So maybe if you do really want toast drinks to be a thing, make it into a thing. It was good because it was really interactive because if you didn't know everyone on the table, you did then yeah, you all had nice. to pass something around. It was just interactive, wasn't it? What well, One other um, little, just a tip, depending on how people want to work, is that um, with the bar, this, this really works, you know, when you, have it when someone's having an open bar at the yeah. wedding is that you don't actually have to have a physical bar like you could just have like this the, the when the staff are walking past so you go over and you ask for a drink they bring it to the table the only reason it's good is because sometimes when you have an open bar people obviously properly take the piss mm -hmm. and a lot of the time they're picking a drink up they're taking a sip they're putting it down they're going back to the bar and taking yeah. another one so it kind of stops that but Again, it feels I, like butlery. I quite like it. Yeah. I like you, it. You're I like like your, your pocket will like it. Trust my, me. Yeah, but my logistical brain is like, how, how many staff I mean, do you I've have walking around? Like, that, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, like... Big baller ones, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, like for that ballroom weddings and stuff where they can do it. Yeah. yeah. But it look... Can work. It can work. It depends on numbers, depends on what kind of drinks you're doing, but it works if you've got a space that doesn't have a very good bar to work at. Yeah. It stops that, like, bottleneck I, I remember, actually... What, I don't know if I could tell this, but at my brother's Stop wedding, every story it. starts like that. But at my brother's wedding, they, he, he um, obviously had a, a bar and it was, an, it was an open bar. And this guy went over, I actually don't know who the guy is, it's, it's the other side. Um, so sorry to my sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. um, and this guy went over to the bar and he said, I'll have a pint please. And um, they said, yep. And he said, how much is that? And they said, no, it's an open bar. He said, well, in that case, I'll have 10. Oh, and he comes, comes back with it. That's the only thing. That yeah, you yeah. I think it's just <laughs> you've I, got to know your guests. Yeah, like yeah. if they take the piss. Like we are. Yeah. Oh, do you know we we do a party every year, um, for the business every time we turn a certain age, and we always do an open bar. Oh uh, yes. And so, my, so do we. My partner was. Can at, we come? Yes. yes. 100%. <laughs> my partner was at the bar. And there was this girl that I don't know who she was. She must have been from a venue or or yeah, something yeah. like that because you don't see a lot of people's faces, so you kind of. If okay. you don't interact with them, you don't know them. And she was like, oh, I'll let you go first and I'll get you a drink on the tab. 
and he was like they, we had two tabs so we have a tab for my guys that yeah, can have yeah, literally yeah. anything and then this yeah. year we reduced it down a little right. bit because people took that absolutely yeah, pissed with the cocktails yeah. last year she's like only if it's on the free tab though and he turned around and was like my partner's paying for this uh. so i'm gonna go first i'm gonna get myself a drink on my tab and i just thought how like it's just yeah. like a piss take isn't it got to know your guests because we had a i didn't know bar. my guests. yeah that's true we had an open bar we knew all of the people we knew kind of what they were drinking we didn't have ridiculous numbers we still Did managed to cocktail. as well like that it was only these three cocktails rather than them saying oh, i can order a hundred year old whiskey they, mm. th- it was limited so to we them. brought all the drinks yeah, yeah. and we paid for bars so yeah, they could fine. only have what they had that, but exactly, yeah. we didn't we put a list of cocktails but Which then was we, helpful it was you had helpful. like four cocktails and you kind of just picked off there because you're like oh, yeah, that nice. but, yeah. That but nice. we did have it so that they could have anything because be- again it's, it was about us as in brian was was cocktails and that's how we met and blah 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 so we wanted that to be a quite a big element of the day so we made sure that people could get that experience of like oh i like something sweet and i like vodka yeah, and blah, yeah. blah blah so again the tip for everything for weddings is think about what's most important to you first and start there. If music is the most important thing, yeah. go and speak to the function band and yeah. say, guys, what's the quote? How much is it? What do we need to know? Get all that information to then book the rest of the stuff, but mm-hmm. get them in early. We, we've had, talking about getting them in early, I've had people call before. We had a girl in choir um, last year and she didn't have a boyfriend yet. But she just wanted to be ready. Just wanted to know the prize. Um, just so she knows. I'm, I'm that yeah. girl. <laughs> I, yeah, it, it was you. <laughs> I've always said, I was like, I want the function man. Yeah. That is it. But oh, I have thanks. people that book before they're engaged yeah. because they know they're getting yeah. engaged. Holly, you, my yeah. client Holly, shout out Holly, you'll listen to this. She booked her venue before she was even yes, proposed. Yes, she did. So, yes, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen someone book us and Claridge's before they've been proposed mm. to. Wow. Like, and then he didn't propose for six months. And then I always imagine him being like, will you marry me? And she's like, yes. And by the way, but the function is it going to happen? Yeah, but that's probably like, these yeah. are good, don't they? And he's like, I take it back. <laughs> Have you got, how, how far open? Do so you... we, uh, we've got bookings in 2026. I've got mm. two in 2026. Wow, Shout out yeah. to those, those yeah, gals for getting one, in early, so. but well, yeah, fuck you. Well, yeah. <laughs> I have an eye from um, the diary yet. Yeah. See, I just no, keep wait, it open. Yeah, it's open. What difference to me does it Yeah. What difference to you? Get them in. Yeah, I don't know. It's like we're we're really niching down though. So because we started the business and we just took everything on, now we kind of I think by twenty twenty six it'd be one a month that we do. I'm a I'm a I'll go wherever you want me to go. Yeah. Get around a bit. Get the big. It's the big ones, isn't so it? You need bougie. the T, the TLCs. Sorry, bougie. You've got they got like suit makers. They've got yeah, everything. Don't true. come at me. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else? Is there any other tips? Is there anything else that people should know about you that's super important to end this podcast on? Um, no, which is, is, a, is that a good end? No. I, uh, <laughs> I think this has been really insightful that there is so much value, again, behind a product, behind a service. Yeah. And all these things that you spoke about that like, again, I didn't even think about things going wrong. And didn't think about the mirror dance the mirror, d- yeah. All of that that I mean, provides so, so much value. And it's, it's always that conversation, isn't it? It's, it's not what you're paying. It's like, it's the whole experience. Like, I think as well, work with we have a lot well. of people that ring and say, um, you know, how much do I need to spend on on production? So like staging and lighting mm. and things like that. Um, we are as good on the floor as we are on a bespoke stage. It makes no difference to us. It makes no difference to our performance. It makes no difference to your party. Um, but it's just that look and that initial when people come in. So it's just about like, what is what is um, important to, to each person? Um, yeah, they, honestly, I know it's boring me saying like, oh, it's do what you want. But like, I genuinely believe that you know, you fit within the budget that works for you. We we did one um, where they couldn't afford um, us and food, so they didn't have any food. And we're like, no, nah, <laughs> don't do that. No, have food and have a DJ or have something that works yeah. for you. But that's what they wanted. And it was the greatest party. It was in a little like village hall. It was us and they had like little nuts and olives out. Um, and just like a cocktail bar. Yeah, and it was amazing. And like, that's what was important to, and then we did another one where, if this is, none of this is sounding good. We did one where they sold their car to have us, which is crazy, you know, don't do it. Please don't do it. It's, but I imagine like the next day, them sitting at the bus stop with all the presents, like, was that a good idea? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should we have done that? I did see <laughs> my nan sitting in Gangster's Paradise yeah, on the table. Yeah. So my nan loved it. So much when people book with us and they actually can't afford it because we do two different payment plans. So you either pay in full or there's a split payment. But if you can't afford it, just don't, you always say this, don't do no, it. Don't, don't stretch do yourselves for one day. Like, like, I'm not here to right. put you in a position that's uncomfortable. It's a balance 100%. of, it's, it is the day, but it's still one day. Yeah. And you've got to be able to wake up the next day and be like, worth every single penny, a million happy percent. with that. A million like, percent. Exactly what I wanted it like. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks yeah, for really having good. me. It's an absolute pleasure. It I feel was like almost it's worth a two and a half hour drive. Wait for dinner, dinner tonight, yeah. will be. Okay, <laughs> yeah. We'll show you Cheltenham, don't worry. Yeah. Not, not Gloucester, obviously. No. <laughs> don't, you'll get hate for that. Yeah. Gloucester. Ick. <laughs> <laughs> so are you. No, I'm not. I'm from Cheltenham. No, you're not. Born and bred. GL51, hun. <laughs> GL Gloucester. Um, thank anyway. you so much. Let, can you just let everybody know your... Like where they can find you and okay. how to get in touch with you. Yeah, so check us out um, at uh, the Function Band on Insta, on TikTok. It's just the Function Band, um, and uh, the website's the Function dot Band, no dot com. It's the future. Oh, oh. oh. confuse a lot of people. Bougie. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Function dot Band, and um, yeah, like you'll find all the details on on any of the social media or anything, and get in touch. Call us. If you want to chat to me, call the office off. You are going to get requested so much anyone. now. I want to speak to Mum of the Hair. Mum of the Hair, please. Speak to Brad. Ask him how many. I want to speak to Brad. Yeah, I want to. Yeah. Maybe we should get Brad Next in. Next time we need to, to do. Oh, uh, no. That none of it will be being used if Brad <laughs> We want Brad. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. in. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you later.